Sun was initially introduced in this box set and at the time had many other boxes and things that came out with it, but this is the original 1990s, early 90s, Dark Sun. And the game at the time was called Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Second Edition. Um, and as you just mentioned, the property has moved into different forms, different kinds of games. It's been an IP that's been attempted in different groups or different purposes. Um, one example is the fourth edition Dungeons and Dragons version as well. So we are not really quite playing the, the Dark Sun IP. I am heavily influenced by all the things that influenced it from the 60s and 70s. So I am kind of, I, I really love a lot of things about it, but they had to make it clean for the kids. Boring. <laughs> exactly, especially if you were a teenager in the 70s, like me. Then you look at 1990s stuff and you were like, what is this Disney crap? <laughs> so when, when I see people in fetish gear fighting mutants in the desert, I have a very different kind of approach Ooh. from the underground comics and the, mm -hmm. the period, you know, the science fiction of the time. So yes, we're doing it, but we're going to do, we're, we're being influenced by it. It's helping us, mm -hmm. right? We don't have to obey everything in there. So there are a few things I have to kind of throw out. Um, and the, 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 here's the thing, just like I have in this little handout here, this is a fantasy world that is this harsh desert full of, you know, pain and misery, suffering, sand, and they never quite use the word, but radioactive everything, and it's um, uh, every excess of over-the-top gladiatorial games and um, you know, weird temples emitting strange energies and um, all, the, all those sort of tropes you can imagine that go with this stuff. So in this primary region, the sort of center of play as far as the game was concerned, there is the hmm. okay. There are several cities, and each one is ruled as its own little city state. Each one has a dictator or a sorcerer king. They're called each of them in different ways, claims to be a god or to represent a god. And uh, to live there, you basically have to obey their rules and their rules are a little disorganized because they're immortal and crazy. So people have kind of created a culture there over the centuries. Um, and they also conduct a lot of trade. Different areas have different resources. There's enough trade to call it a common culture or set of cultures, but it's really savage. And if you, have bad luck during a trade deal, your whole village gets, you know, ends the, the trader turns into a slaver <laughs> and um, you can find yourself carted across the landscape to be, you know, pulling the oars on some weird ship or uh, fighting gladi gladiator combat or just being a servant in some city somewhere. Um, or if you are in a caravan and you have bad luck and the elves decide that you haven't paid enough to go through this part of the desert, well, you will all find yourself dragged back to their tribes and now you get to live out your life being a slave in some weird desert tribe somewhere. So it's it's pretty brutal overall. Um, but there are some areas of plenty. I mean, there is water, it's just the problem is the water is controlled by people. So in this area here, which is in Away from these mountains, um, this is the most water-rich area in basically the whole setting. 
And so there is this forest along the interior of these cliffs and, uh, and, and mountains. Um, nearby, uh, there's some of the harshest imaginable environment. This is not water. This is sand. The city Nibinai is the one that I want to play around and near. It is ruled by a sorcerer king of the same name. And the central palace of the city is basically a huge statue of his head, which gives you an idea of what he has put all of his time into for the last few centuries, is having people build a palace that looks like his head. And um, it is a, a, a wild and dangerous place full of uh, the, the security forces, the, the authoritarian structure, are all women who are formerly his wives, although only the few head consorts are actually his uh, close wives. It's, it's a title. Um, so you have all these scary women with various psionic powers, you know, running around policing the place. Um, the nobles of the region are defined as such because they control the water. If you want water in Nibina, you're paying off somebody to get water. Um, and that somebody, they consider themselves nobles, they run the farms, um, and they have, since they have no real administrative or social policing power, they run their little water gang uh, farms and feasts the way they want, and, and otherwise they just have parties and play and take drugs. So it's a, it's kind of a, a free for all. Um, people are kept happy because they can pay enough to get water and to live. Uh, the organization by the, the wives um, is enough to keep everything, you know, keep everybody fed. Um, and if you're bored, there are the gladiator games, which in Nibinai is a pit, a triangular pit, the best seats are down below, closer to the action. So it's this pit that goes deep down into the earth with a tangle of ruins radiating outward from it underground. Um, it's the one of the, there's, there's lots of things to tell you about, but what I'm saying is let's talk about characters because this is a character-centric fantasy. This is, think of a comic of the set here. We don't really care about the setting. The setting is just providing crazy detail after crazy detail and okay. danger after danger. So that's what that's fine. We care about who these characters are, right? We want to see the pictures of those characters. We want to see them kick ass. So that's what we're doing. It's time for you guys to make up your characters. This is a game called the pool. We are using the rule system called the pool. from the tryout. <laughs> and you'll see. There's more to this game. The, the pool is a very powerful system, actually. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a famous game. And what was your little thug's name? Uh, little Tooth. Little Tooth, that's right. Okay. <laughs> little Tooth and Ru. 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 And so then over here we have this fellow who's named what? Um, Axel. Act oh, one. can I add something more? Axura? Axel. Oh, Axel. Well. Oh, V. Okay, Axel. Okay. Oh, as the name name implies, she has a knack for making tricks out yes. of the situation. Can yes. I add that? Of course. Oh, uh, do you have the words for it? Uh, she. You'll wait for later. Wait for after because we add words later. Okay. Right. At the end of the session. At the end of the session, you get to add yeah, fifteen that's... words, so you can just put that in there. Okay. Yeah. Um. So yes, very good. So tricks, correct? Yeah. Okay. So she has a thing for making tricks. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> that is just fine. Well, if we look on this map, 
this is the, the little one. So I guess for our purposes, we will just pull out this bigger map just for a moment. Right. Perfect. As you can see here, there is a trade route, a long and arduous trade route that is uh, leading into Nibbani through here, through this pass between the Black Spine Mountains and uh, these, the, the storm something or other mountains. And the, uh, the, the traveling group that's coming through here uh, is a rather special one. It is small, but uh, surprisingly has been quite safe, although from anybody's objective point of view, it would seem relatively undefended. So who's ever in it must have very, very, very good connections or some kind of protection that others know about. Now, Who knows what? In the rocky badlands of the pass, it's going to go off trail, which is something you never, never, never do if you're traveling. Don't leave the roads um, unless you're some sort of crazy adventurer looking for ruins or something like that, or a mad person looking for knowledge or just feel like you and the uh so so when it does this it's it's a it's an unusual thing to do um living up there in the rocky hills um actually are um a a, a, a bunch of uh dune weepers who use some holes and crevices and old ruins to live in. None of the three of you know this. You know all about it because you live there. <laughs> <laughs> so in the Rocky Hills, at least one of the caves, which has weird water coming out of it, which you don't drink. It's, that's a bad idea. Um, there, there are ruins back in there. Um, that some of the Dune Reapers have kind of set up living back there or going in and out of there. And it's considered very sacred to this group of Dune Reapers who are just intelligent enough to have sacred things. Um, and so uh, that's, you don't really know the interior very well because you're not sacred enough. Yeah. Um, but, uh, the, but this complex is a piece of your your group's territory um so that's how you that's your experience of all of this which has nothing to do with this this troop or this 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 uh i would say caravan but it's not it hasn't really been a trading caravan it's got a uh, a small group mm -hmm. yeah it's got a small group of uh mounted guards but nothing too extensive um and it has uh let me think your two characters okay first of all you're with it because it was the best passage you could get to get out of town to come back and so you probably paid maybe the master of the security force to okay. you know, to be on this, it's going to Nibbani. Nibbani is a place where you can disappear very, very, very easily. Oh, that's good. And it's a it's a haven of of uh, very shady trade, and uh, it also values performers and fighters. It's the only city where the majority of the gladiators are free instead of slaves. Oh, so the gladiator, if you if you live through enough bouts to become popular you can say i'm done and you basically 
you know, be a rich person. <laughs> so, so Nibbana sounds like a, a place that the Trixie might like to go after whatever terrible, you know, situation. Yeah. Uh, has, has forced her out of. It's the same place as he? Yeah. Well, that's the city here, and then we are in this past going to the city. Okay. okay. Um, and let's see. So I'm just thinking about where you come from. What are some of the hell holes that. Oh, you might have come from Ram, which is like this really, really, really wretched, yeah, dangerous maybe. place. So we can look that up later. Okay. So um, here. Now, what about the two of you? This is actually fairly straightforward for you. I think I I was doing something for someone. Oh, I left, more than that. I left Nub more than Nub that. and I yeah. on a task, and now I'm returning after I've been I'm there. telling you more about that. Okay. Your patron is named Ashatra, and uh, she is uh, on this trip, and nobody ever sees her. She's, I mean, yeah. the, everybody is sent to their duties or or put on some job or whatever um if a, if a shatra has to come out nobody sees her it's under heavy surveillance um so you so she's been more or less sequestered away and her servant who is a very polite man who seems to have no distinguishing features whatsoever a bald skinny man it's very, very, very quiet. Has a name, maybe? Um, yes. Uh, this is Palik. P A H L E E K. Um, and uh, Palik is is very has has managed all arrangements with you. Your skills are exactly what they need, and now is the time that your skills will come into play. Um, so anybody on the caravan knows that this is a professional who's traveling with the, with the, you, you, you like have a room in one of the wagons. Um, and oh, but you're an like elf. It. Yeah. I'm you're not going to stay in. No, you, that's fine. You like sleep on a rock. That's true. Uh, so you, with your, you know, nestled against the, mean, the cat. I get that. So never mind myself. the room. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. you are, uh, so, but you travel with them yes. and in the, are a respected member of the, the proceedings of the, I mean, they, they know, everybody knows that you're part of the, the, the favored, oh, the part of the staff, okay. right? Yeah. Part, I'm, I'm writing this down, like going right. to that part of the favor. Yeah, of a, of a shop, right? Anyway. So, um, but you have never seen her very, yeah. you may have seen her maybe with a veil or something, okay. you know, sitting in the shadows of her wagon at most. I could have been stalking the caravan, I guess. That's one possibility. Does your character basically, uh, yeah, your character maybe basically is just a predator out yeah, there, yeah, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So maybe not from the beginning, but uh, maybe. Right, and you're from those, you're okay. from those mountains. Yeah. Right, so when it goes off trail, yeah, that's what I that's know. you're like. Yeah. Maybe maybe one of them will be careless, yes, you know. Exactly. That, right. that, yes. that habit that they have of going about being. I don't think people in the dark sun setting are very modest about their bodily functions because if you go behind a rock, you're probably not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> they don't mind being seen. <laughs> so. Uh, so you're maybe you're wondering if somebody's a little shy and yeah. goes behind yeah. a rock, but you can, you can nab them. So uh, are you telling any of your pals about this? Mm, no. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I've left. I've left. Oh, you left. Oh, so yeah. you're hungry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Anything? Yeah, yeah, small you're... lizards and uh, scarabs. Oh, like yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is no good at all. No, no, no. Yeah. Don't okay. do it. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, and so you're uh, a a. A paying passenger, effectively, but also expected if there's trouble that you would fight, mm. and so that's part of the deal is that if there's some kind of problem that you would be a fighter with the, the others. Um, it's you'll, you know aware. It's, it's probably very clear that you're you're best with your your missile weapons, so that's understood that you would you know, jump on top of a wagon or something. 